From the Athens Tech Studios, this is the Athens News Podcast. Local news you can use about Athens and Clark County, all in seven minutes. And now, here are your top stories. An athens Clark County police officer arrested a couple in downtown Athens for selling balloons filled with nitrous oxide, commonly known as laughing gas. The officer observed people with balloons on a corner and found the couple selling them in a parking deck. Initially claiming it was helium, the man admitted it was laughing gas. The officer, recognizing the drug's common inhalation use, credited the arrest to a watchful eye. The couple faces misdemeanor charges, and their three children, left alone in a parked car, were taken into custody by the State Department of Family and Children's Services. This from WUGA. The Georgia Justice Project is inaugurating the Athens Second Chance Desk, a free resource in collaboration with the Solicitor General's Office and the District Attorney's Office. The program aids Athens and Oconee County residents with criminal histories by offering assistance to restrict and seal eligible records. This two-step process limits public access to criminal history information, potentially improving employment, housing, and education opportunities. The Second Chance Desk aims to address the complexities of record expungement and removal, providing legal guidance to individuals seeking a fresh start. The office, open monthly, requires registration for appointments. This one, the flagpole. Matthew Bowling, Georgia Bulldogs track and field star, is turning pro to focus on his Olympic dreams. Despite having one more year of eligibility, Bowling, known for viral videos and marketability, ran for Team USA at World Athletics Championships, winning gold. His achievements include NCAA titles, SEC honors, and being the only four-time SEC Scholar Athlete of the Year. Bowling, with sponsorships from Duncan, Nike, and others, plans to make the U.S. Olympic team at the 2024 trials for the Paris Games. He aims to leave no stone unturned in his journey, embracing the next step. This from the Athens Banner Herald. Achieve more with Athens Tech. At Athens Technical College, their programs can connect you with in-demand and high-paying careers. I graduated from Athens Tech in May and started my job two weeks later. I had a job before I left, thanks to my professor, and just focusing on growing a career. As far as Athens Tech, I think I've been a member of the advisory panel for 10 years now, and uh, it's been been an awesome experience. I'm currently going to Athens Tech. I started out as an accounting major. I have finished all my accounting classes and then switched over to the culinary and baking program. My name is Alex Lang. I'm an electromechanical engineering student. This is my second year at Athens Tech and I graduate in December. The long-term goal is to work for the railroad. Uh, whether that be Norfolk Southern or CSX. Achieve more with Athens Tech. Find out more at AthensTech.edu. From the Athens Clark County News Facebook page, Jasmine Zimmer and Sexton from Athens posted, Vera narrowly dodged, I'm talking inches, an accident for the second time in the last few months due to someone not yielding as they entered the roundabout at Tallahassee and Whitehead Road. Scared me and all four of my kids that were in the car with me. Figured it may be worth it to share this here, in case anyone doesn't realize that traffic entering the roundabout does not have the right-of-way. They have to yield to the traffic already in the roundabout. Others commented, Julie Bain from Athens says, A few weeks ago I almost got hit on when someone came to the roundabout going towards town and turned left to Whitehead. They apparently did not want to wait for the traffic backup to move on and go around the circle. Mitchell Ross says, You would be surprised how many people know what to do at a roundabout. Valerie Dove from Athens says, I live on Tallahassee and despise this road. People on Whitehead hardly ever yield to traffic coming from the left. Another thing, people not going the speed limit. It's 50, not 33. I'd just rather get on Lavender to Prince. The University of Georgia secures a $7.2 million grant from the Federal Transit Administration in collaboration with the Georgia Department of Transportation to acquire up to eight additional all-electric buses. UGA already boasts one of the largest electric bus fleets in American higher education. The expansion aligns with UGA's commitment to sustainability and operational efficiency, reducing the university's environmental impact. The new electric buses produce zero tailpipe emissions, enhance campus mobility, contribute to improved air quality, and support UGA's goal of fostering environmental stewardship. 
The move positions UGA as a model for others in promoting sustainable transportation options. This from UGA Today. Congress is in a sharp divide over preventing a federal government shutdown, which would lead to furloughs, military without pay, air travel disruptions, and cut vital services. The Food Bank of Northeast Georgia's Director of Development, Kelly Klein, emphasizes the impact in Athens, where the food bank serves a 14-county area. The Senate proposed a bipartisan continuing resolution to avert a shutdown until November 17, but it faces challenges in the House. The House aims for an 8% federal spending cut, stricter border security, and reduced aid to Ukraine, while the Senate suggests adding $6 billion to Ukraine and $6 billion for U.S. disaster relief. This from WUGA. An off-duty Athens Clark police officer arriving for a court matter intervened in a potential crime outside the Clark County Courthouse. Upon questioning a man attempting to enter the sheriff's office vehicle, the man assumed a fighting stance and charged the officer. Despite a Clark County deputy's attempt to assist, the suspect broke free and ran. After a pursuit, the officers apprehended the 33-year-old homeless man near a federal building, where he resisted arrest by kicking. A taser was used to subdue him, and he now faces charges including obstruction, battery on a police officer, and disorderly conduct. The officer was unharmed, but his suit was torn during the scuffle. This from the Athens Banner Herald. Athens commissioners are divided over accepting recommendations for two studies on affordable housing and homelessness. Some express skepticism, with Commissioner Thornton stating she didn't support the homelessness study and feared spending might attract more homeless people. Commissioner Culpepper called the barriers to prevent homeless individuals from entering the county. The affordable housing study highlights a gap between housing costs and affordability, suggesting a $3.3 million annual contribution to an affordable housing fund. The homelessness study recommends allocating $5 million in American Rescue Plan Act funds to the Homeless Coalition for staffing, outreach, and shelter beds, with urgency as funds must be spent by 2026. This from the flagpole. Thanks for listening to the Athens News Podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is a production of BG Ad Group. All rights reserved.